uh, all of our first timers here and, and some uh, friends of ours, amen, uh, dear long, lifelong, before I was born friends, amen? Anybody got those? Yeah. <laughs> you know, they knew you during your good face, hallelujah, you know? I went to a church where um, all the ladies, I, I used to love it when I would go back at like 20 years old and they were like, oh, I changed your diaper, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Then I went over to the other three ladies, and they're like, we changed your diaper too. I'm like, awesome. I went to my mom, I said, did you do anything when I was a kid? <laughs> and, and this is no joke, but when I was a baby, they took me in, they took me to the doctor because I had a rash that grew under my arms. And come to find out that the rash grew under my arms because everybody would grab me by the arms and pass me from pew to pew to pew. I guess I was the only baby in the church. I don't know. Amen? We can't pass Reagan around too many pews. Amen? Amen. That's a joke. Amen? Amen? For those of you that weren't here, Reagan wasn't gaining weight. We prayed for her to gain weight. Reagan loves Doritos. That's, that's, the, that's the whole summary right there. Amen? Uh, thank goodness she loves me. Amen? Or doesn't know you. But we are so thankful you're here. Um, we do have a couple of things coming up. Uh, don't forget tonight we will have our small group here at the church. Uh, which is the gospel movie. We've been watching the gospel of Luke. And so we will, we will be watching another uh, hour plus this evening, tonight at 6 o'clock here. Um, we are in 21 days of fasting from the 5th until the 25th, fasting and prayer. And at the end of that, Sunday the 26th, we will have a baptismal service. Amen. And so we do have several that have already come forward. Amen. Hallelujah. And said they want to be baptized. So uh, we're thankful for that. Come on. Give God some praise. And, and we, had, we had some great baptisms at the end of the year. And, and my son uh, came in and my son was like, all right. So, you know, uh, he didn't know really because he hasn't been here the plans we have for the, for the platform and stuff. And originally, if he knew me, I was going to have a big baptismal back there with, you know, waterfalls and all that stuff. And uh, I'm not having that. And the reason I'm not having that is because, maybe it's me, but there's something about the old horse trough that, that just sings to me. But I'm gonna put, we're going to put it on wheels, and we're going to make it, because when we baptize, we baptize right out here, amen? amen? And the reason we do that is because, guess what? This should not be something that's way in the back, that's down here or over there, or half you can go to, or you can't see Amen? But we, when we baptize, we want everybody to be a part of it. Amen? Because for us, it is a time of rejoicing. It is a washing away of the old, coming up with the new, and everybody said amen. Right? And for those of us that have experienced, we love it. And for those of us that are, that are getting ready for this, we are excited for you. We are praying. Um, they are going through these 21 days of fasting with us as well to get to that state. And uh, so we are so thankful. I am thankful already for all of the things that I'm hearing out of this time of fasting and prayer. And so far, a lot of it is the struggles. And why is that a good thing? Because it kind of opens up your eyes to the fact that we kind of tend to get into a rhythm of things and God isn't a part of it. And it's nice to put God back into a lot of our daily routines. And hopefully by the end of these 21 days, that'll stick. Amen? And so, uh, so we've had people doing different things. We, we, uh, the way that we fast here is it's all individual. We're not doing a Daniel fast as a church or a full fast as a church. Uh, we fast individually. And that's because if you don't need to give up coffee, then me saying give up coffee wouldn't help you. Amen? Amen. So for some of you, giving up coffee means something. Amen. Hallelujah. For some of you, it don't. Sorry, I was pointing at you right there. Amen. Second row. Uh, right? But but for some of us, coffee, giving up coffee doesn't mean anything, right? So it's like, okay, woo, I gave up coffee for 21 days. I am I'm more, I'm closer to God, right? So so we do this. We want you to fast something. Hopefully it can be food related. If, if, if your uh, body and, you know, medicines and everything else allow that, uh, we understand if not. But people are fasting social media, different things as well. We have some people doing full fast. We have some people doing uh, juice fast and, and just broth and uh, all of those things. Uh, we, we did a couple days in the beginning and then uh, I've been challenged by 
some of the brothers in this church already, they've been talking about it and excited about it. They're going, we, we are going to the last three days of this. We're going full fast again, just water. Amen. If you've never done it, you can give it a shot. Amen. But uh, it's got to be a God thing. I'm not telling you to fast just so you can lose a couple pounds and feel better or whatever. Amen. Uh, it does reset you physically. But I believe this, it resets us spiritually. Um, if nothing more, guess what? When you drive by a McDonald's and your stomach goes, guess what happens? You go, dear Lord, please let me not be hungry. Amen. So you prayed. So we did it. Amen. Hallelujah. It worked. And uh, so we do those. But with our uh, prayer time, we have opened up the church. This week we were open Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock. And then Saturday we came in here from 9 to 10. And this week we're going to do a little bit different. But this week, Monday night, 7 to 8, is going to be our New Testament prayer and our, our time of silence. And so for those of you that have been in there, it was a great time Wednesday night. We, you've got uh, prayer journals. We, we have these. And so if you, if you have yours, bring it up Monday night. If you don't have one, just bring a notepad and we'll get some more here. And what we're doing is we're writing down things like what we want, what we're looking for, where we're at, how we feel, all those kind of things. Why? Because you look back 21 days later and go, wow, I feel like I've handled this differently or I feel like I've gotten victory over this situation. And I will tell you this right now. The devil does not like it when you decide to do something for God. I, I know we use the word fast like it's this big word. But I'm telling you right now that if you decided, hey, guess what? I'm not going to listen to any secular music or world music, whatever you call it. You know, I'm just going to listen to nothing but Christian music for the next 21 days. I promise you that the devil is not happy about that. And we have seen it in this first week. We have had sickness after sickness after sickness. My wife was in the hospital. We started praying. Everything was good. We're home. All that. I, I, the, the very next day, I, I was getting ready for worship here, and um, Mark called me, and, and the, the, he was being attacked all night long with it in his body. And my mother's homesick, and I'm sure that some others have talked about the fact that they've been been experiencing these things. The Lord is worth everything that we do. Amen. And I don't believe we're getting sick because we're on the fast. I don't believe that. I, I believe that the enemy wants to attack wants to come at us at every angle. And if you read the book of Job, he didn't just hit Job at different things. He hit Job's body. Why? Because he was trying to get Job to give up. He was trying to get Job to tap out. Amen? And Job didn't. And so uh, Monday night is New Testament prayer. It's a great time. We, we read scripture. We, we um, spend time in silent prayer. Uh, Tuesday night, we have a church here at 630. We still start at 630, and it'll be a time of corporate prayer and live worship. So we, we have a little word. We have some worship here, live worship, and then we pray. Wednesday night is going to be women's prayer. Women's prayer. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> women's prayer. There we go. All right. You'll be having women's prayer here on Wednesday night. I'm asking, there's a night that you can make it if you are a lady, girl, woman, um, that you be here on Wednesday night. Um, the Lord, at the beginning of this fast, brought this to me that we need to gather together as women of God to pray for our man of God. And... Um, in our church and we need to have a prayer life like Hannah had she prayed diligently until she got an answer from the Lord and I woke up this morning I made up my mind we're going to come in here on Wednesday and we're going to be women of war I want you to hear what I'm saying we are going to wage war on the enemy. Amen. We are going to pull down every stronghold, everything that is trying to come against us and our flesh, and we're not going to give up until we have victory. Amen. Now, 
when I say we're women of war, if you've got some camel clothes, put them on, bring them on Wednesday. All right? Because I believe I'm not done, Pastor Tim. Because we're going to wage war in this church. Okay? We're going to have revival in this church. Right? And we are going to come together as women of God. Come on, women. Get with me right now. Thank you. 
Can I get a yes from someone? Amen. Amen. Right? Like, I'm not lying here. Right? Listen, I'm, I'm the pastor, and if I miss a Sunday, man, I, I'm dying. <laughs> like, like I want, and that's fellowship and everything else. But, but why we got to be? We got to be in our word daily. We have to, we have to continually have our lamps filled with oil that we don't get burnt out. Everybody said amen to that. Amen. Yes. Amen. And um, I, I, I say that because we, I'm reading a portion of scripture here, and uh, you may know about Jacob when I, when I talked about Jacob last week, and I talked about that God was requiring a little bit more from us. He, the, there, there's scripture, and I, I didn't bring it, but the, the scripture does say that when you are empty, he fills, right? That's what the scripture says. That when you empty out, then there's a filling that comes in there. And, and I, I love that about the God that we serve. And I, I want to show you a, an image of something that we all fail uh, or all sometimes come short of or, or can get tied up in. I don't, you know, it's the, the Bible says to lay aside the weight and sin. Heard that a couple times today. A lot of times, the weight that's on your back isn't necessarily something you picked up, but it could be something that's being packed on, right? You know, like, you remember when you were a kid and you were walking out the door with your backpack and all of a sudden mom's like, hold on, hold on, unzips the thing and throws in a lunchbox. And then, oh, wait, 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 unzips it and throws in gloves, right? And sometimes we live in a world where you're walking through the world day to day and guess what? Things are getting thrown in your backpack and all of a sudden you have these weights of the world that might be as simple as the car brakes are gone. Amen? <laughs> and all of a sudden you just feel this, oh, anybody do that? You get in the car, you press on the, listen, if you, if you, if you want to celebrate Christmas, my Jeep is still open. And you can get it in the dashboard. It looks like Christmas lights. Amen? Do you know what I mean? Anybody else? Right? <laughs> I didn't know cars had two different brake light warnings. But mine does. Amen? So uh, it's okay. Amen? By faith in Jesus' name. No. It's going to be fixed this week. But, but, but right? So you, you get that. And like you just get down to those things. And, and things happen. And, 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 and wait somehow gets on. Like, like you get out of prayer. And all of a sudden you get home. And you walk in and you're like, oh, I forgot, I forgot, I gotta, oh, I gotta wash that load of laundry because I don't have any socks for tomorrow, or whatever it may be, I don't know. Amen. I know that that sounds really weird, but those are weights hmm. that can get us off track. Wow, that's cool. Why? Because they steal our joy. Amen. And I don't know about you, but anything that steals my joy is an enemy and is an opposite of what God is trying to do in my life. Wow. And so uh, sometimes we have to understand that, that things that we want, right. things that we desire, things that are natural in this world yeah. might be weights that we were not meant to carry. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But we were meant to just turn over to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, everybody here has probably had a job and you love the word promotion. You love the other word that comes along with promotion. Anybody know that word? Raise, hallelujah. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Nobody ever wanted to go down to the grave. You want to be raised from the grave. Amen? So that's why raise works out there, right? Amen. And so, uh, you know, sometimes promotion doesn't come. Sometimes more work doesn't mean promotion and raise. But anyway. Right. Amen. But I want to talk to you about uh, Jacob. Jacob was the son of Isaac. And uh, there were some different things, Isaac and Rebecca. If you know Abraham, Abraham had Isaac. Isaac married Rebecca. And the two of them were together. And the two of them had twin boys by the name of Esau and Jacob. Does everybody know that? If you don't know it, now you do. Amen? You're one step closer. Amen. And so they had twin boys. And uh, the scripture says this, Genesis 25, 24 through 28. So when her days were fulfilled, I'm talking about Rebecca, for her to give birth, indeed there were twins in her womb. Verse 25, and the first came out red and was like a hairy garment all over. I'd love to say that he was a hairy sucker, right? <laughs> he, he, he was hairy, right? He needed, he needed whatever that stuff is that gets it off. Hair, is that it? Yeah, thank you. I mean, don't ask me. That's my brain. Amen? 
And so he was a, a red-headed monster. I don't know. He was a red-headed bear coming out. And uh, so they called him Esau. Amen? Amen? Thank goodness I'm not named Esau. Hallelujah. Verse 26. Afterward, his brother came out and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. I want you to see that. Hmm. Jacob's hand took hold of Esau's heel. So his name was called Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. Wow. Jacob, later on in the scripture, the story goes, and it ties into where I saw talk last week, Jacob wanted the birthright of Esau. That's right. Esau was the firstborn son. So back in those days, and even today, right, and normally, um, the, the son is the heir to the throne. The first son is the heir to it all. The first son is the one who has the birthright. So in this twin scenario here, when they were born, Esau wins. Whether it was, obviously we know it wasn't by much because... As Esau was coming out, Jacob was onto his heel, so it was right away. But Esau still, by rights, because of the way he was born, had the birthright. Is everybody following? Right. So that meant naturally, everything that was dad's would be Esau's next, and then Jacob would get whatever else. But Esau was the one that was in line. And Jacob, from a little boy, it said that Esau was his father's favorite. Jacob was his mother's favorite. From a little boy, Jacob wanted what Esau had. Jacob wanted the natural things that Esau has. Does everybody see where I'm going here? The, the name Jacob, actually, and we'll, we'll talk about it later on, but Jacob meant to follow behind. It meant a whole bunch of other really big, just negative things. It meant second. It meant, it meant to follow. It meant heel grabber. I, like, you know, when you get a kid and you're like, I'm going to name you heel grabber. I don't know, they were strange back then, but they, they did it. But he, he was Jacob. And so Jacob came out. Jacob wanted the natural things that Esau was going to get. And so are some of us. I went through life wanting things that everybody else had. I don't call it covenant because I don't sit down and say, boy, I really want that. But when the time comes, I'm going to do everything I can to outperform the person in front of me to try to get that position. Does anybody have that now? You're all getting there, right? I'm going to work a little bit extra over the top and, and, and lift a little bit more so that everybody sees me and I get the upgrade and they don't get the upgrade. Right. And that's the way that Esau and, and Jacob's relationship was. Jacob wanted so bad to have that birthright that he was constantly wanting to be in daddy's grace to get the birthright. Later on, it said that he, he actually glued or stuck hair on him, animal hair on him, so that when he went into his blind father, that when his blind father reached out, he said, oh, there's my Esau. By the touch. Does everybody get where I'm going? I mean, he went as far as gluing hair to, 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 to con his own father into giving him the birthright so that his brother didn't get it. That's what we're talking about. And I think a lot of times we can get into this world where we can think more is exactly what the world wants us to do. We need to have more. We need to have a bigger house. We need to have more bathrooms. We need to have a better car. We need, oh, now the cars, now, now every car has backup cameras. I gotta have a backup camera and I gotta do this. And I, oh, your car talks to you? I gotta have that. And, and then you gotta have this. And we constantly push and pull. And if, if we looked back, there probably are some people on a ladder that we might have stepped on on the way up. Maybe not you, but I did. All right, there you go. I'm confessing right now. Forgive me, Lord. Please pray for me at the end. Amen? Amen. Right? But there might have been some people that I knew that the boss was going to stay late and they were going home on time. And I made sure that I went to the break room so it looked like I left too. And then all of a sudden I reappear with the boss is still there late. <laughs> it's a really good trick. You should try it. Amen? You, you used to make me some money. Amen? So it worked. So for those of you who get it, no. But see, we can get, so it's all about the natural. And then I want to I fast forward 
forth to something that happened to Jacob, which I read about last week, but I want to talk to you about it today just to finish up here. Genesis 32 and 24. It was funny, we were in Genesis 25, 24, and now we're in 24 again. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the break of the day. God, angel, there's different phrases. It, it definitely was God here. Verse 25. Now when the, when the angel of the Lord saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint, and he wrestled with him, as he wrestled with him. Verse 26, and he said, let me go for the day breaks. But good old Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Now here was Jacob who had a pretty good life. He, you know, he thought he was at, at odds with his brother. He, he thought his brother was coming to kill him. He, he, he did have some negative things going on, but Jacob got the birthright. Jacob got everything that nature, that this world could give you. Jacob was able to con his father into giving him the birthright. So Jacob got exactly what he wanted from the day of his birth, grabbing onto the heel of his brother and wanting to go first. Amen? And that I can see a struggle inside and him wanting to go first. He wanted the natural things. And now Jacob is in a place later on in life where he all of a sudden wants the blessings of God. He wants the spiritual. He wants the supernatural blessings, no longer the natural blessings. Do you follow where I'm going? Yes. Yeah. Yes. The reason I say that to you is because a lot of times, listen, uh, we, we, it takes a lot of years for us to get to the place where we can sit back and say, I want more of the Lord than I want of this world. And I don't think if we ask people, if I said, well, do you want more God or more world? They'd be like, oh, I want more God. But we do things like we focus on our job, which everybody needs to. And I'm thankful for, for employment. I'm thankful for, for paychecks. I'm thankful that God puts us in that mix. And like I tell you, we're, we're, we've been given the opportunity to give. Why? Because he blesses us with good jobs. He blesses us with good incomes. Yeah. But when was the last time you sat down and said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to study some of the Word. Now, I'm not talking about to, to teach a message. Right. I'm not talking about to, to bring a, teach a Sunday school or teach a, teach a lesson or anything like that. But I'm wondering, when was the last time you sat down and said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to look up online some things that, in the Bible that I have questions to, and I'm going to study those things, and I'm going to try to grow where I am in the Lord, Right? Amen. But see, a lot of times we do that for work, right? Like we can go ahead and subscribe to a podcast of some motivational speaker that's going to tell you how to make your day better so that you can overperform at the job that you're at. But do you also have the balance to that? Do you have the podcast that tells you spiritually how you could be growing so that you can grow that part of your life as well? Does everybody follow? Amen. I'm not getting down on you because I already told you and already confessed that I was there. I've been there. Guess what? I still get there. Right. There are times during the week when I get so focused on my job and so focused on the outcome right. and so focused on the things right. that I neglect the things that God's showing me to do or I end up focusing so much on that that I'm not doing what God called me to do. Does everybody fall? And we have to get to the place where Jacob was where we may have been holding on to the heel, wanting everything that this world could give us, but there has been a shift in us that says it doesn't matter if I have all of those things. Right. This is where Jacob was. It doesn't matter that I have wives. It doesn't matter that I have children. It doesn't matter that I have servants and cattle and all of these things. None of that matters. Right now what matters is I'm not letting you go until you bless me. Right, right, right. I hope you hear me because Jacob could have walked. It said the scripture right before this. He got all of his family across the river and then he had, he had all of them. He had his family, he had his loved ones, he had children, he had, he had servants, he had all that. And now he finds himself alone. 
in a place. And I don't know about you, but there is no better place to find him than alone. Amen? Amen. There is no better place than when all of my possessions are put to the side. It doesn't matter that I have a great job. Thank you, Lord. And I'll continue to work as unto you because that's what I do. I don't work as unto man. I work as unto you. Thank you, Lord. But let me put that aside, Lord. Let me put my family aside. That's what Jacob did. I'm telling you right now. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but I'm telling you, the closer you get to God, the more you are there for your family. Amen. 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 Right? Someone said it yesterday. I was, they, they were talking and they said, they said, I never understood how I could love God more than I love my boy. They said, because I love my son like unbelievably, like when he was born, like he was perfection to me. And, and, and for fathers and mothers in this room, you understand, like how could you love everything more than that? Like how could I love him more than that? But then you learn that the more that you love God, the more God allows you to love your son. And the more you learn to love God, the more you learn to love your son, right? Come on. Amen. And so Jacob was in this place alone where Jacob was saying, I need to be blessed. Yes. And as I close, I'm closing with this. Yes. Jacob's name was to follow behind or circumvent, to be the heel. When he was wrestling with God, God blessed him and changed his name to Israel, which means wrestles with God. Right. I don't know about you, but I'd rather be wrestling with God than heal. <laughs> right? Anybody else? And so but what it shows is it shows a, a progression of a life that most of us have. We wake up and our nature is to want the things in this world. Our nature is to want better. And I'm not, I, listen, I'm all about prospering and I'm all about getting better. And I'm all about not staying where you're at and, and, and doing better. And I, I, I love all that. But what I'm saying is, is with my mind, when, when that's the only thing that I have my hand on, is the gain that this world can leave, give me, then we know what the scripture says. If I gain the whole world, I can lose my soul. Amen? But if I lose it all, for Christ's sakes, then there is the gain right there, church. Amen? And I really believe this. You can have it all. But if there is not an anointing of the Lord, you are missing out. Yes. And Jacob was in a place where he could have kept going. He could have kept doing. He could have kept getting more and gaining more. And all of a sudden, he found himself. And he probably not only found himself alone, but he found himself with this giant word that we all fear. He found himself empty. And he wrestled with God and said, I will not let you go until you bless me. What, did, what was Jacob looking for? Jacob said, it's no longer about the things, but now it's about the anointing. It's no longer about what I have, but it's about what I can give. It's no longer about all the things that I can collect and, 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 and grow in my own personal library, but now it's how can I grow in the Lord and how can I be better and closer to God. Amen, church? And I'm telling you right now, that listen, yes, more is going to be required, but more cannot get there if we don't have more anointing in our lives. Right, right. There has to be anointing. I love every one of you. I say this with respect. I don't know who you are. I don't know if you're there or if you're not. But if you do not have the anointing of the Lord in and on your life and moving and breathing through you, there is just something missing. Yes. I don't know who I'm speaking to right now, but I, listen, I, this is this is the way this is the way to me is. I believe that we were created, and I believe that when he created us, he made a spot. The Bible says that he would abide in us, right? So I believe until that spot is filled with him, we will always have an emptiness. Yes. We can try to put drugs in there, we can try to put relationships in there, we can try to put jobs in there, we can try to put money in there, we can try to put all those things in there, amen? But we will never, ever, 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 ever be filled until we fill that with the Spirit of God. That is the anointing that I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. Why don't you stand right where you are? As they begin to play this song, we're going to open up. 
And, and I'm, I'm being there with you. If you want more of God this year, come and get it. That's the God we serve. He is the God of more, right? He is the God that, listen, it doesn't just say He'll pour out of heaven. It says that He will open up the windows of heaven. What does that mean? That means that He goes over and He opens up the windows. Why? Because He wants to allow that pour out to happen on you. Amen? And I believe right now that there is a difference between just walking this life, getting everything that man wants us to get, getting nice and fine and better and all this and everything else, and doing all those things that we may have searched for before. But there is a difference when we hold on to God and say, God, I'm not going to stop until the anointing becomes my life. Amen? I'm not going to stop until you bless me. I'm not going to stop until you are pouring out of every vein that's in my body. Amen, church? Amen. Hallelujah. As they begin to play, I want us to begin to pray. Shut everything else off right now. Come on. Just a few more minutes, I promise. 